Hello and welcome to Just Vintage Crochet and welcome to 1924. This is a gorgeous beaded purse. I absolutely love it. There are a lot of things I want to change and modify. Not a lot of things, mostly one thing, the size. I do want to modify the size, of course. Uh, you're going to find this pattern in, in the link down below. You can follow the pattern exact if you want. If you do follow the pattern exact, it will be... Sorry, it will be an eight inch wide bag, which I did buy a closure for, a clasp for. Very cute, already comes with a handle. We don't have to worry about a handle. Very, very cute. But personally, if I'm gonna invest this much time and money into something, I want to actually use it. And I don't want a purse that's this big. I want one smaller that would fit my cell phone and maybe just a few, like a lip liner and a lip gloss, something like that. I just want something that's about four or five inches. So, also, I wanted to tell you, you don't have to make this with beads. I did work up a small sample using tapestry crochet and I'm gonna show you that. But what you do need for the beaded version of this, this being the beaded version, isn't that gorgeous? You will need size 30 maroon thread, and you can find this. I'm going to leave a link to an Etsy shop down below that actually has this available. It's really not that easy to find anywhere else. And you will need a number 10 steel crochet hook, and you will need size 11 beads. When you buy the beads, they will say 11 slash 0. Here's how they look close up. They are very, very tiny though. And you will need some beading needles. I will leave a link down below for this kit here that I picked up. I think I paid somewhere around five or seven dollars for it. And it comes with just about every size you could conceivably need, big and small. What's really wonderful about these is you don't feed your thread in through an eye at the top of the, the needle. These split right down the middle, just like that. Very easy to feed your thread through and the beads go through easily. So as someone who doesn't normally bead, and I've, I've done quite a bit now, um, this is the way I have found to be the most effective for me anyway, so I thought I would share it with you. I try to keep the beads kind of mound up into one corner and I just kind of jab at them. Oh, I popped one out. There we go. And I just keep jabbing at them and collecting them. They will slide off the tip of your needle, I have found. So I've seen some, some people use curved needles. I get it. But also, I'm trying to keep my needle close to the surface of the pile. And I am finding some success doing it this way. Then I'll just push them down a little bit. Come back and get another bunch. And after two bunches, I push them all the way down um, to the group. Okay. So, yeah, I'm just kind of raking mostly across the surface. I find it less flicking happens this way, too because they will flick if you go down real deep and the um, needle has some resistance. It'll flick back up and pop your beads out. Here we go. Almost filled up the whole, the whole needle that time. And then I have gathered that many and I'll just slide them down to the group. There we go. And I do want to keep a long length in front of the group of beads that's totally unworked, not only for my chain, uh, but for some just some, you know, thread to work with. I have a little bit of freedom before I have to start pushing all of these down and start unraveling this and pushing these down toward the base of the ball to give me more room. So just a little bit more freedom to work with. So I'm going to grab a few more bunches and I did play around 
I played around with this one here and 120 chains is what I'm gonna stick with for, I got five inches out of 120 chains. So that's, that's gonna be 120 chains folded in half because we are working in the round on this. And that gave me five inches and that's gonna be perfect for me. So let me do this some more. See right on the surface. Try to slip them down once I gather a few, because they will slip right back off the front of that needle, see? They just slip right off really easily. So try to collect them, keep them from slipping off. There we go. And then one more time. No, let's see if I can get a few more on there. Yeah. There we go. So I'm gonna do that one more time and then I'm gonna go ahead and chain 120 chains. And then we will start with round one, okay? And remember, everything I'm doing with the fine thread and with beads, you can translate that into the thicker thread and with a, um, instead of a bead, change your color if you're gonna be doing tapestry crochet. Everywhere it says to add a bead, add your contrasting color. So this video, I'm not gonna be able to teach you to do tapestry crochet on here. This video is gonna be more for those who are a little more advanced in crochet. I would say intermediate to advanced to intermediate and certainly those who know how to do tapestry crochet. Okay, I will be right back. A number 10 crochet, a size 10 crochet cotton two different colors and here is the sample that I worked up and it looks wonderful without beading. Now I also changed the stitch count on this because we're using a thicker thread. So instead of 200 stitches like the pattern calls for which I still think I'm not I'm definitely not going to do 200 stitches because I want my purse to be really small and dainty. Uh, but with this one here I wanted there to be at least three of the I can never pronounce it right floor dips the floors okay <laughs> you know you guys know me i'm uncultured swine i wanted there to be at least three <clears throat> so i made this 120 stitches and that is how you get this and it worked out really really great so the colors i used for this one are and this is through Ali's diva silky effect it is like a number 10 crochet cotton but it is so much softer and it is not cotton this is 100 percent acrylic it is microfiber acrylic let's see the name here the name is just a color and it's color 57 and then white which is color 55 and these are the colors that are used here no they use gold i went with white really pretty colors though and then again, that is a two millimeter hook. So there is that. Okay, here we go. I'm going to chain 120. want that to be too tight on the hook. All right. Make sure that there isn't anything here that can blur your vision. We get you a tiny bit more light. Okay. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. I will be back whenever I have 120 chains. So our, I, go ahead and keep your chain as flat as possible and join to your first chain to join into a ring. In this video, we're going to re refer to the stitches as bead and plain, just to keep the language simple and not too wordy. So for example, I might say work three plain, two bead, three plain, two bead. And you'll know what that means. Even if you're working tapestry crochet, you'll understand when I say bead, that's going to be two stitches in your alternate color. Okay, so we are going to work one round of plain single crochet into every chain stitch around, starting with the very first stitch. I've already chained one. So there we go. We're just going to work one round of plain single crochet. Okay, so I just got done finished making my chain and what I'm doing now you might see my hand is a little wet so what I'm doing right now is I am essentially blocking my chain because it is very hard to work with as much as it was twisting around itself itself it was hard for me to get the stitches right I had to keep on doing stitches and reworking them in the chain the right way and it still wanted to twist but since I soaked it it's now flat and straight, so of course I'm just going to let this dry now the way it is, and here it is now. Now it's not twisting, whereas before it was twisting around itself basically like this. It was very hard to work with. It was very hard to figure out the right stitch to slip stitch into to join the round, but I did eventually get it. Um, fortunately, that's largely in part to the fact that this is a small chain. So if you do opt to work the 200 chains, just, you know, whenever you go to slip stitch into your starting chain, see if you can't pin your chain down flat and then work your last stitch. That way you don't slip stitch into it all twisted. But I'm just going to go ahead and I don't have to hold it and let it dry anymore. I, I gave it a good tug but I'm just gonna let it dry like that and then I'll be back and we will start with our beads. Okay, so now that this is completely dry and it's no longer twisted, I am ready to go ahead and get started. Go ahead and chain one at the stitch where you joined with the slip stitch and we are going to work three rounds of beads, just straight beading every row we'll have every stitch beaded. I didn't say that right. We're going to bead every stitch for the next three rows. So here we go. Into the same stitch with our chain one into the same stitch that we joined into, pull up a loop and complete your single crochet with a bead. Slide a bead down and complete that single crochet. Next stitch over, repeat. Pull up a loop, slide a bead down, complete your single crochet. Next stitch over, pull up a loop, slide your bead down, complete your single crochet. Fun, huh? <laughs> I think it is. There we go. Now this might look ever so slightly different from the drawing as those were cut steel beads and these are round seed beads. So it will look a little different. Um, here, I'll pull up the image for you. You can see st st cut steel beads are going to be more of a cylinder shape. And that's what you get that nice stacking appearance with. So, I mean, it's a drawing, but that is what cut steel beads look like. They don't have a lot of gaps. So we are, I'm working with seed beads because they were a lot more affordable than cut, than cut steel beads. They were just way too expensive. It was like $17 for 50 grams. And I'll show you what 50 grams looks like brand new. Here is a 
wrong size that I bought. We need size 11. These are size 10. This is what 50 grams looks like. So can you imagine $17 and I'd need at least three or four of these. Yikes. So I went with the seed beads, the glass. These are glass seed beads. They're Czech, as in like Czech Republic Czech. Either way, there's a link down below to where I bought them on Amazon. It's not affiliated or anything like that. It's just a link. So yes, we pull up the loop, slide a bead down, complete the single crochet, pull up a loop. And the great thing about working three rounds of just... I think I forgot to work a seed on that. I think working three rounds of just bead stitches is really gonna get us into the rhythm of working with the beads in general. <laughs> Keep popping my stitch out. There we go. Okay. When you reach the end of this round, join with the slip stitch into your first stitch and you'll find that stitch. Of course, I'll be back to show you, but if you wanna just move on ahead. Here is what the top of your stitch looks like. It's going to be fully facing you. Both loops will be fully facing you, as you can see right there. That's what the top of your stitch is because the bead is pushing the top of your stitch fully towards you. So this is the top of your stitch. Just join with the slip stitch, chain one, start a se another single crochet, add your bead and complete that single crochet and continue to do that all around, okay? I will be back uh, at the end of this row and we will start the next row together if you prefer to work that with me. Okay, let's go ahead and join. I already counted all of my beads. I have 120, so that's the stitch count I started with. So, find my first stitch. There we go. Join with a slip stitch. Chain one and work a bead stitch to that same joining stitch. Probably going to be the trickiest of all the stitches we're going to have to work. There we go. Hopefully the rest of them are easy peasy after that. <laughs> There we go. Add a bead. You see the next bead over and there is the top of our stitch right there. Just gonna go into the top of that stitch. Trying really hard to make it to where you can see which stitch I'm going into. Pull up a loop. Add a bead and that's going to be, oh no, no, it's so easy to drop stitches with this, I have noticed. Okay, here's our next stitch right here and then our next stitch is right here and then right here. Right here, all of our tops of our single crochet have been completely twisted toward us. That's where we're gonna be working all of our stitches. Okay. And of course, as the piece grows, it's going to be a lot easier to handle, but right now it's really small, it's really cumbersome. So that's to be expected. So next stitch over, pull up a loop, slide a bead down, complete the single crochet. Next stitch over.
pull up a loop, slide a bead down, single crochet. Oh, my hook was backwards. <laughs> there we go. That's how it's looking on the... Now, you will note that our, our beads are going on backwards, not backwards, but on the wrong side of the work. But from what I understand, what I read in the book, and what I've seen other people do, because I did watch a few tutorials so that I kind of had an idea of what I was doing, the beads are always on the wrong side of the work. So with bead work, uh, what, what we would call the wrong side of the work is actually the right side of the work. That's the way our beads will sit. Okay, so this round and one more round of just beads and then two rounds of just plain single crochet. Do all of that and then come on back and we will start working the Greek key. So like I said before, this pattern, this video is not for beginners. It's not even for advanced beginners. This is gonna be for immediate, intermediate to advanced intermediate so that I can tell you to work certain rows on a head without having to show you. Okay. I'll be back whenever we are ready to start working the Greek key. Remember, after our three rows of bead, two rows, plain single crochet, no beading. Join with a slip stitch and chain one at the start of every round. Okay, so there we go. I do have a small gap where my joining stitch is, but I'm not super concerned about that. But here is how everything is looking now. All right, now we're going to start where is my there it is round seven i know we haven't been keeping track of rounds but what we have here is round they call it a row round one was our plain single crochet round then that was one two three four of beading five six of plain single crochet so now we are on round seven Okay, with this one here, we're gonna start off with 10 bead stitches, and I'm just gonna call them bead, and we're gonna to refer to our single crochet as plain, just so that we can have a simplified language for this video. Oh, I'm over here trying to pull on my tail. Okay, make that chain one a little smaller. So we're gonna work 10 bead in a row and then one plane, and then 10 bead, one plane, 10 bead, one plane. I'll show you the picture. This is what we're doing right now. 10 bead, one plane, 10 bead, one plane. Okay, so into our very first stitch, which is our joining stitch, we start working our 10 bead. So that's one. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, then the eleventh stitch over is just one plane, and then we start working our ten bead in a row again. Okay, so I will be back when we get back around to the beginning. You okay, all done with round seven, and I ended with my 10 single crochet, and then after I joined, 
there is that gap we've been dealing with and it seems like it's gonna like pretty much take the place of my my space because you see how there's a space here so it's sort of creating a space for me sort of a void okay how to read this pattern going forward if you do pick this pattern up you'll note I drew a little box around the first step of each row that's because that we only work once this is the one stitch that we work in our joining stitch after that we do not include this stitch in our repeat so for round eight we're going to start with a bead then we're going to work eight single crochet so eight plain then we're going to work bead plain bead eight plain bead plain bead eight plain okay and we're going to ignore this okay so we are going to start with a bead i've already joined and chained one so going back into my joining stitch here we go we're going to bead now we're going to work eight plain then we're going to work a bead plain bead eight plain okay so one two three four five six seven eight and now we're going to work one bead one plain one bead and then eight plain again and so that's the repeat Okay, let's flip this around and see how it looks. That is what you are looking for right there. This is our joining stitch right here. Eight plain, one bead, plain, bead, then eight plain. Okay, I will meet back up with you when we get back around to the beginning. Just go ahead and join with the slip stitch into your starting stitch. And this is round eight, then we will start round nine. Here is a picture on the chart, or here is the chart where we are working. Right here where you see the eight plain, that's what we're working. Okay. okay. So all done with round eight. Now we're going to start round nine. That's going to start with, there we go. one bead so i've already joined and chained one so into my joining stitch going to work one bead there we go now let's look at the rest so of course we're going to ignore everything in the box we work one plain six bead one plain, one bead, one plain, one bead. Then we jump back up here to the stitch just after the box, and that's our repeat. So our repeat is basically, after we work our six bead stitches, we work one, two, three, four, five stitches in a row, alternating every other stitch is a bead stitch. Okay, so we're gonna start with one plain. Now, let's go ahead and work one plane. There we go. Then six bead. One. Two. Three. four, 
five and six. I'm gonna need some more beads. Okay, now we work plain bead, plain bead, plain before we work six bead in a row. So plain, that's the next five stitches I should say. So this is stitch one, plain, stitch two, bead, stitch three, plain, Stitch four, bead. Stitch five, plain. Now we work six bead in a row, and that's the repeat. Okay, so I'll hold this up for you and point it out for you one more time. After you work six bead in a row, you work one, starting with plain, one, two, three, four, five stitches in a row alternating. You're gonna start with a plain, end with a plain, then you work your six beads. And here is how that looks on the graph or the chart. There you go. Okay, so that is row nine. I will be back whenever we are ready to start row round 10, sorry. <laughs> okay, now let's work round 10. 10 I have joined with a slip stitch and chained one our first stitch is a bead stitch so going right back into the joining stitch there let's go ahead and work a bead now I'll show you the row we're going to work a plain a bead four plain bead plain bead plain bead Plain, bead, four plain. So I'll just hold this up so you can write it down. And here is the grid. Okay. So we're going to work the next two stitches, one plain, one bead. There we go. One plain, one bead. Now we work four plain, okay, one, two, three and four and over the next one two three four five stitches we're going to start with the bead we're going to end with the bead alternating every other stitch so then I'll tell you the repeat okay so starting with a bead so that's one Next stitch is plain, that's two. Next stitch is bead, that's three. Next stitch is plain, that's four. And then the fifth stitch over is bead. Okay, <clears throat> now we're going to work plain and bead. And I'm gonna tell you the repeat here in just a minute. So plain, and bead. Okay. Now the repeat is, now we're ready to work our four plain again like we did right here. So here's the repeat. Four plain, oops, up here, four plain. Then we work one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches in a row alternating every other stitch is a bead stitch, starting with a bead. 
So we're going to start with a bead and end with a bead over the next four over the next seven stitches after our four plain. Okay, so four plain. One. Oh. Every time I pop my hook with this, it's I lose stitches cuz the beads. Okay, starting that again. One, two, three, and four. Now, over the next seven stitches, we will alternate every other stitch, starting with a bead stitch. So, stitch one of seven is a bead. Stitch two, plain three bead four plain five bead six plain and seven bead Then we start working our four plain again. And after that, we will work our seven stitches in a row, alternating every other stitch is a bead stitch, starting with a bead and ending with a bead before we work the four plain again. So that is the repeat all around. And I may have messed up. Yeah, that looks like I messed up right here. So let me fix that. That was a mess. Okay, so you have the repeat. I'll be back. I'm going to fix this and finish this row off camera or round off camera, and then I will be back when we are ready for round 11. Okay, now we are ready to work round 11. I have joined and worked a chain one. So this round, I was just looking at it, and it's going to basically be the same as the last round we worked, only everything is going to be opposite, if that makes any sense. What I mean is we're going to work for bead instead of for uh, plain, but we're still going to work the seven stitches alternating. They're just going to start a little different. So we're going to start with our one bead stitch, and our repeat is going to be for bead, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But this time we're gonna start with a single crochet, a plain stitch instead of a bead. And we're gonna end with a plain stitch instead of a bead. Whereas the last round we started with a bead and ended with a bead. So it's gonna be basically the same as the last round, just at the same time opposite. <laughs> Here is the graph if you prefer to go by that right there. Okay, so let's start with our bead stitch. Then we will work our way over to the repeat. Okay, so back into my joining stitch. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to work the next three stitches one plain, one bead, one plain. That's going to help work our way over toward our repeat. So one plain. I may need some more light for myself. One bead. Oh. Got a little ahead of myself there. Then one plain. Okay, now we're going to work four bead stitches. So here we go. Make sure that's all lined up. That looks lined up. Okay. One. Two. 
two. three and four. Okay, now our repeat. We have just worked our four bead stitches. So now our repeat will go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the next seven stitches, we're gonna alternate every other stitch, starting with a plain ending with a plain before we start our next group of four bead stitches in a row. Okay, so we're gonna start with a plain. So our first of seven is plain. Next stitch is number two, bead. Three is plain. Four, bead. Five, plain. Six, bead. And seven, plain. Now we work four, bead in a row. One, two, three, and four. Then we start our seven in a row again, starting with plain. Okay, so then it will be Plain, bead, plain, bead, plain, bead, plain, okay? Then you start doing your four bead in a row. So that's gonna be round 11. So I will be back for round 12. Just go ahead and join with the slip stitch and chain one. Okay, now we are ready to start round 12. I've already slip stitched and chained one. So let's see what we are doing here. We're gonna start with a bead and then we will work our way over to the repeat. Okay, so back into the joining stitch. It's always hard for me to see the joining stitch. It's the one stitch that's always a little bit of a struggle for me. Okay, we start with a bead. Now we're going to work, let's see here, one, two, three, four, over the next four stitches. Plain, bead, plain, bead. Okay. And now my next stitch. It's hard for me to see as well. <laughs> okay. Plain, bead, plain, and bead. Now, let's work four plain in a row. That's in the same stitch, isn't it? No, it's not. Okay, one, two, three, and four. Okay, now we're gonna start the repeat. Why does it look like five? One, two, three, four, five. That does look like five, doesn't it? Let's see here. One, two, three, four. It still looks like five. No, now it looks like four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Okay, so. Here's how the repeat is gonna play out on this one. We just worked our four plain in a row. Now we're gonna work one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches in a row, alternating every other stitch with a bead, starting with a bead and ending with a bead before we work our four plain in a row again. So just like, pretty much just like row 10. 
Okay, so the next seven stitches, alternating every other stitch, starting with a bead, ending with a bead on the seventh stitch. So here we go. Hmm. I feel like that should be right there. Am I lined up? I, I think I'm lined up. Okay, so here we go. One. Two. Plain. Sorry about the dog. Okay, so let's start our seven stitch repeat now. We just worked our four plain singles. We're going to start with a bead for our first of seven. Okay. So that's one. Next stitch over, plain. That's two. Three bead, four, plain, five, bead, six, plain, and then seven, bead. Then we work our four plain in a row. Okay, so that is your repeat. I will meet back up with you when we get back around to the beginning and we are ready to start round 13. We're on round 12 now and let me show you that on the chart. There we go. Okay, I'll see you at, round, at the start of round 13. Okay, now we are ready to start round 13. Here we go. We'll move this up. Oh, I guess I should show you this first before I cover it up. Here is what we're working for round 13. Okay. We're going to start with a bead, and then we're going to work our way over to the repeat. Okay, so I've already joined and chained one, so into our joining stitch, which is always a little tricky for me to see clearly. There we go. We will start with one bead. Now we're going to work a plain bead and plain. Okay. Next stitch over, plain. Next stitch over, bead. And then the next stitch is a plain. Okay, now we're going to work six bead. So, that's one, two, three, oh. There we go. Four, five, and six. Okay, now we're going to work. Here's the repeat. One, two, three, four, five. So the next five stitches in a row are going to be plain, bead, plain, bead, plain. So we're going to start with a plain and end with a plain before we work our six bead in a row. And that's the total repeat. So that was five stitches starting with plain. So here we go. One, plain, two, bead, three, plain, <clears throat> four, bead, and five, plain. Now we work our six 
bead in a row. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then you start working <coughs> your five stitches in a row, starting with plain. So plain, bead, plain, bead, plain. You should start with plain, end with plain before working your six bead in a row, okay? So I will be right back. I'm gonna work until we are ready to start round 14. Just join with a slip stitch and a chain one. Okay, let's work round 14. This round is gonna be pretty easy from what I just saw. Here we go, we're gonna start with a bead. I have joined with a slip stitch, chained one back into my joining stitch. We work one bead stitch. Now let's work one plain and one bead. Okay, one plain and one bead. Now for our repeat, we're going to work eight plain. Here we go. We're gonna work eight plain, followed by one bead, one plain, one bead. Let me show you how that looks on the chart so you can see. One bead, one plain, one bead, eight plain. Over and over again, very easy. Round 14. So we work. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, and then we work one bead, one plain, and one bead. There we go. Now let's take a look. That is how it should be looking. It's really starting to come together now. I wish you could see this in real life. The red looks quite bright and vibrant on camera, much like my nails, but in reality, both are about the same color. It's almost a deep blood red. It's, it's a maroon, you know, it's not quite this bright and vibrant, but it's really starting to come together. There we go. Okay, so let's work round 14. And I will be back when we are ready for round 15. Just join with the slip stitch and chain one. Okay, all done with round 14. Let's go ahead and start round 15, but I'm gonna give you some homework now. And we're going to call this the end of essentially part one, because this is going to be a lot of footage. So this will have to be done in parts. So for round 15, First of all, I'll show you how that looks here. Well, we're gonna start with a bead and then we will disregard it. Here we go. Okay, we're gonna work one plain, 10 bead. One plain, 10 bead. This is how that looks, exactly how we started 
is exactly how we're going to end it. After that, work two rounds of plain, three rounds of solid beadwork like we did when we started, and two rounds of plain. Then we will get into this design. When you work your two rounds of plain, this is what you're working right here. Okay, so when we come back, we're going to start working the, let's see how to pronounce this, fleur de lis, fleur de lis. I, you know, I'm really bad at pronouncing things. I am very sorry. I never mean to offend anyone. Okay, so that is round 15. We start with a bead, then we work one plane and 10 bead, one plain, 10 bead, one plain, 10 bead. So going into my starting stitch, one bead, one plain, and then 10 bead. One more time, after that, you're gonna work two rows of plain, three rows of bead, and two rows of plain. Your three rows of bead, are going to be just like this down here. Okay, so I will see you when we are ready for round 23, because this is gonna be 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, okay? So that will be in the next video. I will see you all then, bye.